Are you there, Penny? I just want to let you know that I want nothing to do with you ever again. Excuse me? Carrie, what is all of this about? Are you alright? I've held back as long as I can, and I just don't have the patience for you any longer. I can't hold myself back any longer, and I want you to know that I want you out of my life. Carrie, what has gotten into you? What is all of this about? I really don't understand what's going on. What makes you want to cut me out of your life all of a sudden? Can't we at least talk about it? Or can't you at least tell me why? Do you really not remember anything at all? You shouldn't have done what you did if you didn't want this to happen. I'm really, really sorry to say, Carrie, but... But I just can't seem to think of what I might have done to make you act this way. I'm sorry that I seem to have done something wrong, whatever it was. But can we please calm down and talk about this? Don't play dumb with me. I know that you've been breaking into my house while I haven't been there. Do you really think that just because you're my mother-in-law you can get away with that? What do you mean? Is that what this is about? Oh, please. I don't want to hear any of your excuses or anything else you have to say. I am sick and tired, and seeing food in my fridge disappear, my beer getting drunk? I don't know when you made a spare key for my house, but I know that you've been coming over while I've been at work, and I have proof. I'm sorry, but I really just don't know what you're talking about. I also work during the day. There's no way I could be going into your house. What you do isn't a job. You just work part-time. I know that you're not busy at all. That isn't true. I seriously work full-time. I'm not sure where you heard that I worked part-time. Well, whatever. The fact is that someone has been breaking into my house and going in when I'm not there. Who else in my life would do something like this to me but my mother-in-law? I mean, I've seen the shows. I know how mother-in-laws really are. I'm sorry, but is that all the proof that you have? That sometimes on TV, mother-in-laws are depicted as the villains? I don't really even know what to say to that. Once again, there you go, making more and more excuses. But you're just digging the hole you're already in even deeper. I'm going to make you regret trying to bully me. Do you really think that I'm trying to bully you just because I'm your mother-in-law? I really just can't sit back and take that. Whenever I ask if you want to spend time together, you always turn me down. I feel like I do a lot to try and extend a hand out to you. And that you shoot me down every time. Oh, really? Is that what you call what you've been doing? Well, whatever. It doesn't really matter what you think. I've already changed the locks on my door. So now there is no way you'll be able to keep breaking in. You'll never set another foot in my house. And with that, I say once again, I'm cutting you out of my life. Goodbye forever, monster-in-law. Hey, Mom. Are you there? I just want to say that I am so, so, so sorry for how Carrie was treating you yesterday. Are you okay after all that? Hey there, Ron. Yeah, it was so awful. I have no idea what got into her. It was all over so quickly. But she seemed to think that I was bullying her or that I didn't like her. Don't worry, Mom. I know that you were never doing anything like that to her. But Carrie was telling the truth about someone coming into our house. Eating our food, drinking our beer and all that. So someone really has been breaking into our house, and we can't seem to figure out who. Wow. Well, that would freak anyone out, but I hope you know that it wasn't me. Of course I know that, Mom. I never once suspected you. I mean, you work all day at your busy office as upper management. There's no way that you have time to do something like that. I tried to explain that to Carrie, too. But she just refused to listen to me at all. But I know that there's no way that you can even come here. Thank you so much for understanding this, Ron. 
But anyways, given all that's happened, it sounds to me like you and I won't be able to meet for quite a while. Right. It's close you are right. I'm really sorry about all of this, Mom. It's okay, really. Honestly, I think I just haven't settled down from this. But anyways, if something like that happens again, we'll have to think of what to do. Okay, Mom. If that's what you want to do, then let's do that. Hey, Penny, what is the matter with you, huh? It's been three months since I cut you off, and I thought things would finally settle down, but they haven't. How did you get another key to our house? Carrie, honestly, what kind of way is this to talk to me after three months? Of course I haven't made a key for your house. So what? You think I'm crazy? You think this is all just in my head or something? I know that you've been breaking into our house during the day again. But this time, you aren't just stealing some food and drinks. But my favorite ring has gone missing. How could you take that? And just what makes you think it was me who did it? Why are you accusing me like that? I'm not just accusing you. I know for a fact that it was you because I have proof. You have proof? What do you mean? What kind of proof do you have? I have photo evidence. There's no way for you to escape this now. I don't get it. That doesn't make any sense because it wasn't me. What do you mean? Of course it's you because I have proof that it's you. That's that. You're a thief and that is that. There's no arguing your way out of this. Do you really intend to try and get out of this when I have concrete proof it was you? The fact of the matter is that you are over. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and tell Ron that I caught you in the act. If you want further proof, I went to your house and found my ring there while you were away. Ron, are you there? Please tell me where you are right now. I think we need to talk. Oh, hey, Mom. Is everything okay? Are you alright? I'm out on a business trip, but what's up? Has Carrie reached out to you and said anything weird at all? No, I haven't really heard from her at all. Why do you ask? Well, I was just talking to her, but she seems to think that I stole her ring. In fact, she even said that she broke into my house and found it there. Wait, she said what now? She did what? Are you serious? Yeah, it's true. But I just have no idea what she's talking about. Do you have any idea what she could be on about? Oh, you know what? I think I might actually have an idea. Oh, really? Well, what is it? What is going on here? Look, I think I should come clean with you and tell you that Carrie actually doesn't know where you are or even what you do for a living because I never told her. What do you mean? Why doesn't she know any of that? Well, the thing is that I wanted to tell her. I really did. But whenever I tried to tell her anything about you, she has told me she wants nothing to do with you and doesn't want to hear it. She would just always get so mad at me that eventually I just gave up. Oh, I see. Wow, that is a lot to deal with. I had no idea about any of that. Mom, can you please let me handle this situation? I think I know what needs to be done. Okay, that's son. I trust you. I hope that you can handle this and that all goes well. No problem. Just please give me a little bit of time to talk to Carrie about all of this. I know that you can do it. I hope it goes well. Penny? 
It seems to me that you've been trying to run away and avoid paying for the crimes that you've done. Don't you think it's time that you came clean to me and confessed? If you just admit that you stole my ring, I might think about forgiving you. Carrie, are you still going on about this? Why are you pretending like this actually happened? What are you talking about? I know for a fact that you're a thief. Listen to me. I will forgive you on one condition. You will give Ron and I your house, no questions asked. Then I want you to agree to never talk to Ron again and move far, far away. I really don't know what you're talking about at all, because I've been overseas for the past three months. Wait, what do you mean by that? I don't understand. Why are you overseas? What are you talking about? I mean that the company I work for has branches overseas, including in Australia, where I've been for the past three months and will be for the next two years. Wait, so you're actually not in America right now? You haven't even come back to visit? That's right. I've been so busy settling in and working for the past few months. I haven't had a chance to visit the States, you and Ron or anyone else at all. As for my house in the U.S., I've been living there on my own for the past five years ever since my husband passed away. I've asked someone to house sit for me. So, care to tell me about when you went into that house? Wait, is all that true? I didn't know that about your house, or any of this. You still haven't answered my question. You said that you broke into my house to take your ring back, remember? Care to tell me a bit more about that? Because I asked my aunt to take care of the house. Hold on, so... You weren't even living in that house? What is this about? What is going on here? I literally just told you. But it seems to me that you mixed up who was actually living there. I, I guess so. Sure seems that way, but I had no idea that you were even working abroad. That you even had a real job. That's right. I have way too many memories left in that house and would have just hated to get rid of it. I rented it to my aunt for half the price that I paid. Wait, hold on. This is all just a big misunderstanding. This can't be right. And as far as I know, you don't know my aunt at all. So do you care to explain just what you were doing in the house that she was living in? Well, I know that Ron had a spare key to your house, so I just borrowed it. Hold on a second. That can't be right. I remember that my aunt made sure that she got the key from Ron to make sure that there was no chance of anyone breaking in. Hold on. She did what now? Is that true? That's right. So you must have made a spare key without me knowing while I was still living in the U.S., I, okay, yes, I did that. You caught me there. Anyways, I have to go and talk to my aunt about getting the locks replaced on the house. Hold on, can't we just talk about this? This is all just a big misunderstanding. Well, you can go and talk to Ron about it because he said he would handle you. Hey, Penny, what the heck did you say to Ron? He just told me that he wants to get a divorce. You need to say something to make him change his mind. Do that and I'll forget all about your thievery. What are you talking about? This whole thing is just a drama that you made up yourself. You know for a fact that I couldn't have broken into your place. But, I mean, you have to make him change his mind. Please! You have to do this for me. I'm begging you here. I really don't know where you get off asking me, Ron's mom, for help out of this mess. I mean, I know all about how you've been cheating on Ron. What do you mean you know? How did you find out about that? Well, it really is quite obvious. In fact, I know that this little affair of yours started six months ago. 
I know that the reason you got together with Ron in the first place was because you saw my house and fell in love with it. And thought that marrying Ron would be your best way to get it. But it wasn't long before you met another man and started to cheat on my son. But I really wanted the house. Your house is my dream home. I just wanted to kick you out so that I could take the house and then leave Ron. And you really thought that you could steal this from me? It was you from the very start, wasn't it? You were the one stealing your own food and drinks and blaming it on me. It wasn't me that was sneaking into our house and eating the food and stuff. It was actually the other man that I was seeing. But he just wouldn't seem to bite whenever I accused you. I was really hoping that he had no idea what was really going on, though. He seemed to have no clue about who it really was breaking in. And that was while I was still in the U.S. But after that, you tried to kick me out again. You tried to pretend that I stole your ring, and that you found it in my place, so that you could try and take my house in exchange for you dropping your accusations. But you didn't know that I was actually already out of the country and renting the house to my aunt. Well, it seems that your plan really backfired, doesn't it? It wasn't a bad plan if you had just done a bit more research. But I was so, so sure that this would work. How could this happen to me? You never bothered to even learn about the person that you wanted to steal from. Isn't that basic canvassing? That's standard criminal stuff. Anyways, at least now that Ron knows all about what you've done and wants a divorce, I don't even have to feign liking you anymore. No, please! You can't leave us like this! You have to take Ron and ask him not to divorce me. I'm begging you! Please, I have no one else I can turn to. I am never going to forgive you for accusing me or betraying my poor son. Penny, please don't leave me. I need you. You have to help me. Don't ever message me again, got it? I don't want you coming near me or my son ever again. You need to learn to take responsibility for your actions and understand that you can't treat people like this. We are going to make you pay for what you've done. It seems that Ron actually found out about Carrie's affair before she came to me with the false allegations of my breaking into their house. But he hired a private investigator to look into all of these happenings, and in the end, found out the truth about Carrie. Between the lawsuit for the affair, alimony, and my own lawsuit against Carrie for falsely accusing me and trying to steal my house, she ended with a huge bill, as well as a divorce. She tried running back to her parents' house to find a place to live, and they forced her to start working in a factory in their small town. I heard she didn't last long, though, and was fired for being negligent. I just hope that one day, she'll wake up and learn to be a responsible adult. Thank you for watching! If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this! Hi, Mrs. Dawson. You know about the barbecue party the company is going to be hosting the day after tomorrow, right? Good evening, Mrs. Huffman. Yes, I heard about the party. Me and my family are going to be attending. I see. If that's the case, then I want you to stay at my side and be my maid the whole day after tomorrow. What? Your maid? Why would I do that? Oh, you don't have to dress like a maid or something. <laughs> Even if you are an acquaintance, the children will be scared and cry if they see you like that. <laughs> don't get any weird ideas, you pervert. <laughs> I don't know what exactly you had in mind, but please don't bother me with such ridiculous texts. I'm the wife of the department leader. That's why you have to do what I tell you. I'm telling you that I'll give you an opportunity to work diligently under me as my personal maid at the barbecue party we're going to be having the day after tomorrow. And what exactly do you want me to do? Mainly cook the meat I'm going to be eating, probably. <laughs>
I also want you to make sure that I don't run out of drinks. Sorry, but I'm afraid I can't do that. What? First of all, I don't understand why you have to be your maid at the party. The company-hosted barbecue party is supposed to be a fun event, where we get to know our fellow employees. Huh? You're rebelling against me? The wife of the department leader. Just because you're the wife of the de department leader doesn't mean you deserve any special treatment. You're an insolent bitch, Mrs. Dawson. Aren't you so poor that both you and your husband have to work in order to make a living? And still you talk like that to me, the wife of the department leader. Yes, our children are the same age and go to the same school, which is how we got to know each other. But it's only been one month since you moved into this neighborhood. To be honest, you're the lowest ranking mother in the neighborhood. All we did was move to a new house though. My child still goes to the same school as before. But I'm the wife of the department leader of the company you work at. Don't tell me you don't understand the difference in our ranks. I'm going to make sure you do what I say at the barbecue the day after tomorrow. If you don't do what I say, then I'm going to report you to my husband, the department leader. After that, you won't be able to talk like that to me again. Mrs. Dawson, about your insolent speech yesterday, if you want to continue your relationship with me, your superior as a wife of the department leader of the company you work at, and as a fellow mother, then I want you to prepare for me premium grade A5 beef as an apology. Of course, you're the one who's going to pay for it, not me. Good evening again, Mrs. Huffman. You're talking about me for tomorrow's barbecue party, right? Bringing in your own food is banned at tomorrow's party. What? Who decided that? We were told this in advance. Huh? The company rented the venue, tools, and food for the barbecue from a local restaurant. It's the restaurant's rule. No matter how expensive or luxurious the meat is, you can't bring it into the venue. I'm the wife of the department leader. Yes, but the wives of the other high-ranking employees are also going to be coming to the party. And none of them are being as arrogant as you are right now. Huh? You just say I'm arrogant? Could you please understand already that you're not special? and don't deserve any such treatment? So what if you're the wife of a department leader? But... Goodbye, I'll see you tomorrow. It's a fact that I'm still your superior. Prepare that grade A5 B for me tomorrow or else. Hold on, Mrs. Dawson. Why you? I told you to cook the meat for me at today's barbecue party. Just what do you think you're doing? The man standing next to you is a managing director, right? Why are you, the nobody, acting so friendly with him? What? And now a senior managing director as well? And now his wife, too? When I tried approaching them, I was just casually brushed off. Why are they so friendly towards you? Just what exactly is going on here? I see. I understand now. You're jealous because I outrank you as the wife of a department leader, and are trying to use this company-hosted barbecue party as an opportunity to make connections with the higher-ranking employees of the company. You're even trying to get friendly with the wife of a senior managing director. There's no way I'm going to let you get away with this. You looked hilarious back there. When I threw that piece of hot meat on your arm, you screamed, It's so hot! Hot! <laughs> the way you were panicking was so ugly and magnificent at the same time. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this one more time. My husband is a department leader. Which means that I, as his wife, outrank you, who is just a regular employee at this company. I graced you with a piece of hot meat. So be sure to eat it even if it fell on the floor. <laughs> it's a shame I didn't hit you in the face. But I'm sure that this is enough to make you leave the party and not return. <laughs> I made sure that no one saw me. So no one knows that I'm the one responsible. 
If you had enough, then don't think about rebelling against me ever again. <laughs> well, it looks like your insolent person has already left the venue. So I think it's time for me to return and enjoy the meat at the party. <laughs> that reminds me, the new CEO who went into office just last month is supposed to deliver a speech, right? Apparently, the new CEO is a woman. So I better make sure I befriend her and that she remembers me. <laughs> it's time for me to give said speech. So excuse me. Huh? Why? This must be a joke, right? You're the new CEO, Mrs. Dawson? Thanks for that little scene back there, Mrs. Hoffman. You wasted such a good piece of meat. Such a shame. The hot meat you threw at me hurt a lot. But I applied cold water to the burn immediately, so luckily nothing serious became of it. Why? Why are you... Why am I the new CEO? Just what exactly is going on? I know for a fact that you were just a regular employee at the company my husband works at. Oh, is that true? When did anyone say that I was a regular employee? Uh. Of course, it's true that I used to be just a regular employee. But it's already been 20 years since I joined this company. 20 years? I was lucky enough to be chosen as the new CEO of the company. Hold on, just how old are you, Mrs. Dawson? You want to know my age? I'm 40 years old. What? I gave birth when I was 34 and have a son in the first year of elementary school. You also have a son in the first year of elementary school, right? What about it, though? I thought you were younger than me. Oh, is that so? You're 35 years old, right, Mrs. Huffman? I heard that there is quite the age gap between the department leader and his wife. But putting that aside, because you thought that I was younger than you, you assumed that I was just a regular employee at this company. You kept telling yourself that and eventually it became a fact in your mind, right? Well, um... The barbecue party is about to end soon. I don't want to cause a commotion. So I'll end our conversation here and close the party. Let's talk about this again at a later time. Um, actually... Well then, goodbye for now. Mrs. Dawson, answer my calls. I need to speak to you. Why didn't you tell my husband about the incident at the barbecue party? You don't even have any evidence. This is so unfair. Actually, I do have evidence. What? You probably didn't notice at the time. But when you threw that hot meat at me, I was holding a camera in my hand. What? Why were you holding a camera? Of course, I was filming you when you threw that meat at me. The moment where you threw that hot meat at me from behind the barbecue grill was caught perfectly on camera. Mrs. Huffman? Huh? That's so unfair. I showed this footage to your husband, the department leader, which is why I sent you a request for an alimony yesterday. Did you not see it? But I am so careful as to not leave behind any evidence. Why didn't you have to show my husband? Now the money I'm going to get as property distribution might decrease because of this. Hold on, I'm about to get divorced. Not about to be divorced, but we're already divorced, no? Huh? This morning, the department leader told me face to face that he divorced you. No way! He went to the city office the first thing in the morning and turned in the divorce papers, apparently. But today's a holiday, so I thought that he couldn't submit the divorce papers yet. Official papers such as these can be turned in regardless of whether it's holiday or not, you know? 
He's telling me to leave in two days as soon as he submits the papers. I was planning on talking things through with him and confining him not to divorce me this weekend. If he did submit the papers this morning, then that means that I'll have to leave before Saturday morning. How am I supposed to change his mind now? But my parents have already passed away, so I don't have a home anywhere. I have nowhere to go. I don't even have a salary since I'm a housewife. What do you expect me to do about this situation? Why are you telling me this? It's none of my business. I know. Let me see at your house. Huh? You're the CEO of the company, right? It should be easy for you to support one extra person in your house. Friends need to help each other, right? Um, we aren't friends anymore. And I don't think we ever even were, actually. What? I heard that your husband got custody of your child. So, aren't really a mother anymore. I heard that they're going to be moving to the town nearby. Which means that your child is going to be changing schools. No matter how you look at it, there's no reason for us to be acquainted anymore. But... Well then, I think it's time to end the conversation. What? And what am I supposed to do? Wait! I have to go. I'm going out for lunch with some of the other mothers. What? Didn't you always decline when I was the one who invited you? I couldn't help it. You always invited me to lunch on weekdays when I have work. Why did it always have to be a weekday? I go to tea and lunch though. With the other mothers who invite me on weekends. Huh? That's so unfair. I don't quite understand what's unfair about it, but... Goodbye now. What? No way this is true. Hold on, I haven't finished talking to you. Help me, Mrs. Dawson! Two weeks later, Mrs. Huffman barged her way into the company office. The department leader went himself to deal with his ex-wife. Apparently, she told him that she now works at a job that comes with housing, but that she's more suited to being a housewife. She also said that you must be having a hard time since no one does the household work anymore, which is why I'll let you marry me again. Of course, the department leader refused her offer, which is when she started screaming and going on a rampage. Some people were injured and a police report was filed against her. Not only did she instantly lose all of the money she received in the property distribution of the divorce because she had to pay money as an out-of-court settlement, but she was also forced to take on debt. It seems that she isn't getting along with the people at her new job either. And she lost her arrogant demeanor and now mopes around while always looking down. <laughs>